All righty, everybody. Today on Beta's podcast, I'm going to be answering questions regarding relationships, dating, social skills, confidence, happiness, whatever you want. And I have my good friend here today, Mr. David Gold, the actor and part-time Wookiee, as we've found. Uh, how you doing over there, Davey? So far, so good. Um, just cooking up some fish right here. I nice. just had a banana. I think I might have another one here. Yeah. Fish and um, banana. That's like, it's my favorite mix, my dude. Oh, yeah. What, what about raspberries? That tops it off. Fish, here. bananas, raspberries. <laughs> yeah. Somehow, somehow that'll work. I don't know how, but yeah. there's there's a chef that'll know how to do it. And I think maybe you're the chef. I am. Who knows? I'm a Wookiee actor chef. <laughs> nice all right so uh you got a question for me sure i got like a few here like um but anyways uh so i saw like something about like confidence and stuff so i don't know how do you how do you achieve confidence oh all right well uh put really simply because i've you know studied confidence all my life is um you don't get really you don't really get confidence by comparing yourself to other people going, "Oh, they're worse, I'm better, I'm great." Um you get confidence by three things. One is the most simple thing, which is being healthy. Now, I talk about this, I've talked about this in my old audiobook and uh and I'm actually in the middle of editing, re-editing the audiobook to like really? re rebrand it, re-release it, repolished really nicely. Um, cause I think it's really important and everybody really loved it. And so I'm going to re yeah. re-release it. Okay. So, um, first is health. This is something that a lot of, especially introverts and introverts are who I am generally coaching. Um, Introverts are not as focused on health as extroverts usually are. Now, obviously, I'm just kind of making really sweeping generalizations, but just go with me here. Um, we're not as in touch with our bodies as extroverts are. And so it takes a little more of a conscious effort to care about our health, um, namely exercise. Um, but it is very, very important to be exercising at least three days a week, preferably four to like seven days a week. Um, and when you exercise, exercise hard, like get yourself really, really out of breath. If you're lifting, you know, you should be feeling sore the next day um, and be doing this consistently. What happens is your body is naturally going to make you confident. Because your body's default state is just feeling good, feeling confident um, for typical people. You know, I, I, I want to acknowledge people that, you know, have clinical severe depression, things like that, uh, mental sure. disorders. Um, and so, I, you know, I don't want to discount those, those, you know, mental conditions. However, for typical people your body is going to just make you confident based on how much you exercise. Next, what you're putting in your body. Um, if you're eating really healthy and you know what healthy means, you know, I don't need to tell you what healthy means to eat. Um, whatever you consider healthy eating is the healthy eating you should be doing. But generally, um, anytime you're overdoing it with, calories, sugar, oils, fats, carbs, all that type of stuff. Anytime you're overdoing it, your body is just going to feel lethargic, tired. It's going to get ready to rest. It wants to hibernate. Um, and you're not going to feel energized. You're not going to feel alert. You're not going to feel in the moment, excited for life. Uh, you're just going to feel tired. You're going to feel like you constantly need the next hit of food to give you that good mood. Um, and this is all very n basic stuff 
but it's the type of stuff that people just go, yeah, 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 yeah. What's the secret, Anthony? And it's like, well, there's no secret. If you just dedicate yourself to simple stuff, you are going to be simply confident. Um, hold on one second. Do you mind if I take a call from the uh, production for the TV show? I don't mind. Yeah. All right. Do you think? Hi, Melissa. I'm pretty good. So, uh, just a couple of questions. Yeah. Um, is this the same address? Like, am I able to actually park at that parking garage or is that done? So they're actually filming, um, up in the Hollywood Hills. Yeah. Not at the same house. Yeah. I, I can find out if there's a parking structure for you to park at if you would rather drive or if you just make room for your car for you to drive if you'd rather. Okay, so if somebody picks me up, what time would that be at? So I could be ready. Your call time, yeah, your call time is at 10, as far as I know right now. 10? Um, I, I don't know how far you live from Hollywood Hills, but I would say just somewhere. A lot, a, enough to get you there. a little under a half an hour. Okay, so I would say maybe 9, 9.20. Okay, right all right. Yeah, okay, then you could have somebody pick me up at 9.20. Yeah, sure. I'll text you my address. Also, what do I wear? So, Taro said you can bring essentially whatever you would like, just as long as it's not green. Got it. So it's not a reshoot. It's like a. It's a completely different. I don't even know what I'm going there for. <laughs> I was never told. That's totally fair. Uh, Jasmine was originally handling this, so I kind of got brought in late. But as far as I know, you guys are just doing um, some B-roll shots and then the interviews and things so they can get the grab while you were on. Oh, got it. So it's like a sort of yeah. confessional type of thing. Yeah, more or less. Uh, and that's all I'm doing? Got it. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Cool. Awesome. Uh, Thank you so much. So 920 and I'll text you my address. Thank you. Bye. All right. Sorry, guys. That was like an important call I needed to take because uh, the reality show that I'm doing, there's one day left of shoots and it's like they're interviewing me. I guess it's like confessional type stuff and then B-roll. And so I needed to be ready for that because it's tomorrow morning. That's that. And now I've scared David away. Come back. Hi. What's up, I'm buddy? My <laughs> All right, can you hear me? Because I'll just keep talking. Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, it's, Great. Yeah, right over okay, there. so health. Now, another thing that I found that fucks with my confidence in terms of health is fucking caffeine. Okay? Now, caffeine. I am a caffeine addict, as we all are, because that's the drug um, that we're allowed to be addicted to in society. And uh, nobody gives a shit. But for somebody like me, and likely you too, I don't know. But I, don't I, know. I have a very sensitive body. I'll have a Red Bull, right, in the morning. I'll yeah. be high for two hours. And then at night, I'll crash and I'll feel low. I'll feel very, very in my thoughts. I'll have negative thoughts. I will be tired. I will be on edge. So I'll be... Listen, if anybody in the live chat right now has felt this type of crash from caffeine, tell me. I want to hear. Because all I know is I crash every time I have caffeine. So I drink tea, mostly herbal tea. Every now and then I'll throw like a teensy bit of like black tea in there just to give me a little bit of something. Gotcha. But uh, ultimately no crash. Um, now remember, I care about one thing. I want to feel fucking amazing at all times. I never want to feel bad, ever. There's no reason for me to ever feel bad. And so all of my life, all of my 20s, I was a good mood detective. 
I just was constantly trying to figure out how to always have a good mood because what tended to happen is with all of this bullshit lifestyle that I was living, I was being in, I was living in waves. I was in a really good mood for a week and then I'd crash and I'd be really, really in my head and anxious and low self-esteem for a couple weeks. Then I'll come back up again and then I'll go down again. And sometimes it would be day to day. Sometimes it would be week to week. Sometimes it would be month to month. And I hated that. I hated being at a social function, a party, a bar, whatever it was, feeling great. And then literally at the drop of a dime, my entire vibe just goes, shut down, introvert, wow. no talkie. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so the health exercising consistently, frequently eating, what eating healthy, um, find an exercise that you can do and that you'll enjoy several times a week. Um, cutting things down like drugs, alcohol, caffeine, all of those things will keep you away from feeling amazing at all times. Even if, even if they're little bits, it could be death by a thousand paper cuts, you know? Um, and mm -hmm. I, like I said, I don't want the slightest bit of anxiety. I don't want the slightest bit of a low vibe. I want to be feeling energetic, refreshed, and engaged and present at all times. So the next thing is presence. And if anybody has my audiobook, you know. Presence is super, super big. Um, it's too long for me to explain fully right now. I mean, I'm going to be releasing the audiobook soon so you guys could get that and really get into it. But uh let's see what what's the best way to convey presence in just like a sentence um i would say gratitude for living is presence when you are gracious for the gift of life you respect the life you've been given and in turn you are constantly acknowledging and appreciating that gift you've been given, which is being born, living life. Okay. What people with low self-esteem, uh, people that are not confident, people that are in their heads all the time, overthinking people that are negative all the time, they are constantly finding ways to run away from life, the gift, the gift you've been given. Um, we want to retreat. We don't want to experience life. We want to skip through it and get hits from things that will give us those temporarily, uh, temp temporary pleasure uh, sources like, uh, overindulging in food, overindulging in alcohol, drugs, drinking too much caffeine, um, whatever, uh, mindlessly scrolling on the internet, mindlessly playing video games for hours at a time uh, without intention. But when you are present, you are constantly paying attention and acknowledgement and respect to your life, which is whatever is around you at this moment. I wasn't, I wasn't physically showing what's around me. I was looking for my dog to make sure he didn't shit on the ground. He's over there under the chair. <laughs> and you know what he's doing actually? He's laying down with his eyes open, looking at the carpet. Why? Because the carpet is his life right now and he loves his life and he respects his life and he pays attention to his life. And so that carpet that he's looking at right now, sniffing, looking at, feeling, is a million times more rewarding and pleasurable than the, the hits of dopamine that we're looking for here and there um, that are 
very quickly going away. This yeah. might be a little confusing, but basically what I'm trying to get at is loving your environment, loving everything that is around you at all times without exception. So David is in front of me right now. So I love David. David is the most important person to me in my life right now. And because of that, I feel good about what's around me because I'm paying attention and respect to what is around me. That rewards me in turn because my brain is saying, wow, everything around you is so great. You must have a good life. So you must be happy. And then you feel good <laughs> without any negativity, without any ego, uh, making judgments about, you know, uh, David's Wookiee hoodie, anything like that saying, David, man, I'm on a Zoom call with a freaking half Wookiee. This isn't good. Man, what am I doing here? Then what do I do? I go, damn, my brain goes, damn, you must not have a good life. Because you are downvoting everything around you, right? Look at the way that David's eating, like a fucking slob. Who am I talking to right now? <laughs> but because I don't feel that, what I'm really seeing is David's authenticity. The fact that he doesn't give a shit, that he just loves to eat. He wants to, he wants to be as vulnerable as he can with me. And I appreciate that so much for him to show me who he really is. And that makes me feel so fucking good. Uh, now we can talk about this for hours, but presence is the next thing. The last thing is purpose. Uh, most people live without a purpose. And because they live without a purpose, they don't have good self-esteem. They don't have confidence because they feel worthless. A purpose is something you do in your life that gives value to the world somehow. Okay. So when you are giving, when you are uh, creating a positive effect somehow in the world, somehow consistently over the course of your life, you are rewarded with a sense of purpose. And you feel amazing to see the positive change that you make in your life. This sense of purpose makes you feel like you are worthy of living on this planet. That you're not just a lump of bones and skin and whatever, 90% water or whatever. Just laying around playing video games, watching TV. You're actually here for a reason. And others appreciate that about you. And their life is better because of you. It's purpose. Purpose could be big. It could be small. Purpose doesn't care if it's big or small. If you have a grand purpose or a humble purpose. It's just the fact that you are giving value somehow in the world is what fills you with confidence. Now, guess what, David? It's just these three things. It's your health, it's your presence, and it's your purpose that make a person confident. Confidence is happiness. And when you're happy, you're attractive. It's really it. It's really simple. When you're healthy, when you're purposeful, when you're present, you're confident and you're happy. You're at the highest potential to be confident and happy. And in turn, you become attractive because people admire that. They strive for what you have. What you have feels almost impossible to them. Because they're living on a diet of dopamine hits, which is not really giving them that long-term feeling, that long-term reward. So when they see you living like that, they admire that about you. And they see you living with a sense of purpose. They see how happy you are. They see how good your life is because you appreciate everything around you. Right? They see how attractive your body is because you are able, <laughs> because you're able 
to to high. accomplish your purpose and your presence at the highest degree. That's why it's so important to be healthy. Healthy, mm -hmm. being healthy enables you to be as purposeful as you can and to be present. The less healthy you are, the less inclination you have to be present and be purposeful. How was that? Beautiful. <laughs> you like that? Yeah. No, yeah, seriously, I appreciate it. Um, it's a good and I truly that. and I truly do love how you eat. That was great. It made me want to eat like that. <laughs> I eat really fast. Yeah. Like I down things in like I one time had like a I think a baconator from Wendy's. Nice. Someone got for me. Mm. Less than a minute. Mm. Thing. Less um, than a minute you had you ate a baconator? Yeah. You really are a Wookiee. Look at you. Yes, I <laughs> Here, do the growl. Come on. <laughs> yeah, but um No, do the growl. You. Do the growl. Oh, do the growl? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes, dude. <laughs> Fuck yeah. You're the bomb diggity. <laughs> um, uh, awesome. Um, uh, I want to, yeah, all right. Do you have any you. short questions? <laughs> do you have oh, any sure. questions where you know I'm going to answer in less than ten minutes? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think I do. Here, give me a second. Here. So I, I have like stuff written down. Also, make sure to ask you how you are, which I already did that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, I'm good. I love that that's in your question. I love that that's in your question list. Thank you. That makes me feel special. Got, yeah, yeah, of course, man. All right, well, so what's know. the next question? Anyways, uh, how do I uh, progress forward in like a relationship? Express your attraction. That's it. Have you how done do that? I, I think a little bit. Nope, I, not I think... enough. <laughs> okay. It needs to okay. be it needs to be explicit. Explicit right. attraction on your end. Mm -hmm. It needs to be communicated. That must mm -hmm. happen in any relationship. So if you're friends with somebody and you don't want to, you know, rub your uglies together, you just want to be friends with the person, you are still expressing your love for the person. You're still expressing how much you like that person. A relationship cannot go anywhere if you don't do that. So okay. if you are attracted, if you literally feel attraction, physical, sexual attraction for a person, and you don't say it to them, then you are, you are purposely halting the relationship from accelerating. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. And uh, let's do let's do more questions another time because I have other people in the room. Yes, sir. Cool, buddy. It's great seeing you. Thank you for coming again. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, but I, I don't know if you saw the video, but uh, if you ever get the chance, it's just I think I sent it to you through the Instagram. I'm it pretty sure I saw it. I think I responded. But you know what? Can you... Can you message me again and so I could check check to see it again? Sure thing, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I can do that. Cool. All right, you take it right. easy. Have a nice rest of the podcast. Thank you so much, bye -bye. buddy. Bye-bye. All right, let's bring in, let's bring in Raul because Raul was patiently waiting. Raul died. What's up, buddy? Hey. Damn, you look better and better every time I see you. Oh, thank you. I was like, ah, oh, I don't even yeah. know what I'm doing. Yeah, you know what you're doing. Don't you uh, lie to me. Don't you play coy. Uh, well, I, I guess not, but it's only a gym, going to a gym, but that's it. But without a routine and stuff, but I don't know. <laughs> Wait, did you say you went to the gym today? No, not yet. I today I went to work and um but what are you talking about the gym? The what? You mentioned the gym. What do you mean? 
oh that well you're saying i look better i was like I don't even know oh, what I'm doing to I see. I see. Yeah, you're going to the gym. Yeah, that's probably what it is. You look like you lost a lot of weight. Uh, oh, um, so you have any questions for me? Yes. Uh, one that I, I, I've had in mind ever since uh, uh, a podcast a while back. Let's see if I remember correctly what you said because uh, I think you said something about people can – how was it? uh can't be in a relationship unless you learn to be happy on your own or something like that Does yeah that sound right yeah and then and then you said something like um but sometimes you wonder if you've gone too deep if you you yourself have gone too, too deep into that or something does that sound right also no <laughs> no i i uh, gone too deep in what in like being happy by yourself. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Well, I was, uh, I was, I was kind of half joking, but anyway, yeah, continue. Okay, because I, when you said that, I, I gotta say, like, huh, I wondered the same thing about myself, like, because there's times where, like, I, I reached that point where I'm happy by myself, and I realized, like, I think that's why in the dance communities, maybe some girls like talking to me or something, I don't know. But I don't know if I'm too happy by myself where I I find more, I think more about the red flag I notice in the women than trying to flirt back. Does that make sense? Say that last part again about flirting back. That I think more about the red flags i see in them mm. and instead of like trying to pursue something in yeah. a relationship you yeah know? that doesn't sound right so is that what you're asking <laughs> yeah. are you asking like um what am i doing wrong type of thing or am i doing it wrong yeah i'm asking like uh well it's more like if um yeah i guess like uh, am I too stuck too much in yes. being happy by myself? Yes. It, yeah. No, yeah. I think I think you're. You know what I personally think, without knowing you too much, I think you're bullshitting. Uh -huh. I think you're bullshitting yourself and you're <laughs> bullshitting me. You know what I really think? Uh, what? I think you're. I think you're too scared to express your attraction to women, and I think that you're making excuses that, oh, well, they have this. So what's the use of telling them this or pursuing this? Um, and if you are uncovering too many red flags with women that you're meeting, something's wrong, okay? I very rarely uncover red flags with people that I meet, okay? It happens once in a while, it doesn't happen all the time. So either one, you're not meeting the right people, which uh, based on what you've told me, it does sound like you're in the right place. But again, I, I know very little about your lifestyle. I'd love to actually, you know, you know, fly over to you, uh, go, go to your dance class with you, kind of sit in, see how it's going, check out, you know, meet the people there. Uh, I have a hunch they're going to be great people. I have a hunch that um this is a success barrier that you've created subconsciously saying well if i don't pursue them well then you know like if i if i don't think any of them are good enough for me well then i don't have to be in a try to be in a relationship with them um because i i i'm just guessing again this is all a guess this is all guesstimation <laughs> that you yeah. don't believe you deserve a good relationship so you are bullshitting yourself. Okay, now that I've mm. now that I've made a complete speculation about this situation, I want you to tell me yeah. if I've hit anything or if I'm wrong. Uh, I don't know. It sounds like half right, half wrong. <laughs> uh, like okay, what do you think is like, right? Uh, well, the. The part that 
maybe I'm a bit scared, but then the part where I'm bullshitting, um, no, some, some of the girls, like, it, it goes back to where, where I feel the same way as you, like, where, where you've mentioned before, like, where you know your worth, and when these girls, like, um, what's it called? You know, I make time, I free my schedule for them, and then... Uh, I go out with them, and then when I invite them to something I want to do, they don't come out. It's like okay, uh, so uh. so now we're getting a little deeper into your lifestyle. So you're going on dates with these women. Uh, yeah, or hanging out, I guess. Yeah. Okay, yeah, whatever. Hang Date, hang out. You're doing it one on one. Uh huh. With, yes. Without friends. Yes. And how is this? How is this happening? Is it all from the girls from dance class? Uh, usually, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. anyway, by the way, everybody that's in the the live chat, everyone that's watching right now, follow follow Ra Raul's lifestyle. He joins dance classes and he dances with people that he finds attractive, and then he goes on dates with them. And he's the biggest sweetheart in the entire world. Okay. So anyway, all right. So you are literally who's asking who out on a date. It's usually them asking. Well, sometimes it's me asking, but usually the ones the ones that I find red flags in are the ones that ask me out. Okay. So they and ask you out, and w yeah, yeah. Let's let's break it down. Let's do a little forensics. How do they ask you out? Uh, -huh. uh they just ask me to join them to to certain events dance events or theater mm. events got it or something like that okay yeah and or, or a game night got it and they ask you to do these kind of but this sounds more like group events they don't they don't ask well, you on one-on-one -on -one yeah. things yeah the some of them where it goes on to like it's one-on-one -on -one and then it moves on to group event and then back to one-on-one -on -one. and so okay. all right and so you right say now, I'm, thinking about, yeah. I'm thinking about a specific one that's why so that's why does that make sense so wait is this more than one or is this only one experience you've had no more than one okay but when you ask me i'm thinking of a specific one okay which is the let's she she was the only one where it went to like group things Okay, so let's let's just break it down. Okay, you guys are together. What red uh -huh. flag are you noticing when you're with her? Mm. Usually the uh, let's see the I think with her when I'm with her none. It's just the the I guess it was just that that I said. Uh, when I, I freed my time for her, went out with her, and then I asked her out to stuff I wanted to do, and a few times, and she wasn't willing to come, and that's where I kind of turned me off. So that made sense. Okay, all right, but I want to back up. What's happening on the date uh, that she asked you out on? Does that go great? Uh. uh so, sort of that's where like i told you i was you weren't bullshitting like weren't you weren't bullshitting where i was probably too scared to make a move and stuff like that you know so got like, it you know all right yeah okay so what it's sounding like so far is all of these girls are seeing how charming you are at the dance they see how great your moves are they ask you out you go out mm -hmm. you don't express your attraction in other words mm -hmm you don't pay them the love that they deserve that you have for them because you're thinking of yourself more than you're thinking of them. In other words, you're going, I would rather not get a rejection than to make this person feel good. Do you see how I'm, I'm using, I'm making my words very harsh right now. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. do that because that's how I do it to myself because that snaps mm -hmm. me out of my bullshit headspace of, oh, I'm just scared. I'm just scared of it. 
And uh -huh. when I do that, I, I give myself the excuse not to do anything. But when I get really, mm -hmm. really bare bones, like let's get to the brass tacks of this situation, Anthony, what's the truth of it? Um, I'd rather protect myself than make this person feel loved. That's the truth of the matter. And when they see that, well, they go, ah, all right. He doesn't want to do this. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I'll tell you, I'll tell you that I guess, you know, I have no fear of rejection and stuff, like I said before, but I'll be honest. Like, I guess in this dance community, I am scared of like, yeah, uh, being a, making a move on the, yes. on the girl because yeah. then they'll talk in the community and stuff like yeah. that. Does that make sense? 100%. You know? Got it. Yes. So here's my answer for you. Um, well, let's, let's first, let's first get this out of the way. Are you a manipulative creep that is just looking to, uh, plow through the entire dance class? No. Oh, you're no. not. Oh, so why are you scared of people thinking that? Uh, I, I don't know. I guess because when I, from going out with these, these, women they tell me about their creeps and stuff like mm, that the creeps it. they dated got uh, it so. um is being let's let's really like get psychological here like let's talk to your the back of your head here uh okay. raul is it creepy to be attracted to somebody that's attracted to you mm. No, I guess not. <laughs> Dude, I love I love your your like thinking about it. Um, is it creepy to be attracted to somebody? Is it creepy to be attracted to somebody that's not attracted to you? Uh, I think not, but I have I've heard uh, I've just heard other other things that other people say yes. Mm. That's the thing. Got it. Uh, don't don't listen to other people because other people they they haven't really gotten this figured out so when they when they hear that what they're thinking is the worst situation they've been in where a guy wanted to use them and was putting on the moves real strong was being all douchey about it and then they go to that memory right mm -hmm. um yeah. Don't don't talk to people about this type of stuff because you're not going to get the right answers. OK, yeah, the, what Please. people what people don't like is they don't like somebody that is coming on to them for selfish reasons. That's mm. what people don't like. OK. Um, yeah. So. It is so just, just to be clear, it is not creepy to be attracted to a person that might not be attracted to you. But let's also clarify, what does the word creepy mean to you? Let's to define me? it. Yeah, let's define it so we know what it is so we could stay away from it. Okay. Uh, to me, just, uh, well, yeah, that's the awkward thing. Because to me, uh, to me, it would be like, uh, what some a creepy i don't know <laughs> uh is actually like someone to, uh stalking that doesn't leave someone alone even though after they said even though after they rejected them and stuff like that and keeps pushing keeps pushing keeps pushing mm. and that's what creepy is to that me. that definitely yeah. sounds creepy to me too uh you know what else sounds creepy is literally just wanting a person for their own personal gain without any love for the person you think that might be creepy uh yes okay uh do you do any of those things no okay then guess what Nobody's going to think you're creepy because none of the things you've said you di have done or want to do applies. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So is it natural for two people on a date to express their attraction to each other? Is that normal? Not natural. I meant oh. normal. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I guess so. 
Is it? No, no. Tell yes. me. Tell me the truth. Do you think it's a normal thing for two people that are on a date with each other to s let each other know that they're attracted to each other? Is it normal, or is that abnormal? Is that weird to do? Well, to be honest, I'm barely learning from your your things. That yes, uh, it it feels like it is. I'm barely learning all that. Does that make sense? So you're saying it is normal to do. Yeah. But previously, before learning from me, you you thought otherwise. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. So, um, well, there you go. Keep that in mind. Now, it is normal <laughs> when two people go on a date. It is normal and even expected for two people to express their attraction in each other. That's what dating is. Okay? So that has right. to happen when you feel the attraction or it's not dating. Right? If you yeah. don't do it, you're not dating. All right. All right. Okay? Yeah. And so what's likely happening is you're going out you're not expressing your attraction. Mm -hmm. That that clocks that clocks into the girl's brain. This is not a date. They say, "Uh, oh, uh, all right, fuck this then." You ask them out again. What do they think? You're going to just suddenly change everything on the second time? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah, that sounds like me. I don't <laughs> express my Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it comes down to the first thing, the first thing that I said to you, you, it's likely that you're not expressing your attraction, expressing your interest in the person. Um, well, well, is it weird that like, like I said, like it's them asking me to join them. So I don't know if I'm attracted to them in the first date mm. or anything, you know? Does so, that make sense? Do you find that uh, for you to feel that attraction to a person, it takes longer than a date? Yes. Okay. Yes. So I say you tell them that. Okay. You could tell All them right. that. At yeah. the, you could tell them that at the end of the date. You could tell them mid-date. Because remember, I didn't say you have to express attraction on the first date. I didn't say that. You don't have oh, to. Okay. You literally don't have to. I said you have yeah. to express it when you feel it. Oh, okay. okay. So if it does take three dates, that's okay. However, yeah. because it's normal for two people on a first date to somehow, even implicitly, not explicitly, express their attraction in each other. Um. That doesn't mean everybody must do that. That doesn't mean everybody wants to do that, right? There's dates that I've been on where I haven't expressed my attraction to the person because I didn't feel attraction to that person. So I would do it on another date. However, if this is something that is normal for you, then I, I believe it's important that you express this to the person you're on a date with. Just let them know yeah. very casually, not like a serious thing, but I don't think you would make it a serious thing. I, you're, you're a real chill guy. So like, I know it would come off really yeah. relaxed and just saying, yeah. Hey, listen, like I'm having so much fun with you, but I'm the type of person where like, it takes a little bit of time for me to really get to know the person and feel those feelings for them. And I just wanted to know if, you know, you're cool with that. Okay. Yeah, I think that would be a big help for me. That That's good. Because, yeah, that, I think I need like three dates or something to know. Great. Great. Like and I love that you know yeah. that. But you know what? Nobody else knows that. Oh, so you, so before you go, oh. you want to practice that with me? Saying that? Sure. Sure. Oh, let me see. On the spot. Let me see. Hold on. Saying that? Exactly. Hey. Uh, let me hey. See. Hey. So, you know what? I had a great time with you, but I hope you don't mind that. 
I'm like the sort of guy that needs like three dates to to figure out my attraction or connection with someone. Uh, if, I hope we keep in touch for a second or third date. Sure. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would say take away the I hope you don't mind because uh, okay. that's kind of com- – that's kind of like making it like a negative thing that you do. I hope you don't mind that I do this bad thing to you. You know, that's, that's the vibe I get. Say it in a positive way. Say it, try to try to twist it, do a little jujitsu and make it into a positive thing. And start it with, I'm the type of person who. Let me see. Sorry. I was just taking, I just took an acting class. And I'm like, I'm trying to do the emotion thing that they taught us. Beautiful. Like <laughs> yeah, get into so. get into character, bud. I'll, I'm here for you. Take your time. Uh, let me see. But now I'm showing how. Uh, all right. So. <laughs> hmm. Don't worry. I'm here for you, buddy. Just, you know, whenever you're ready. All right. Let me see. Um, so make it more, make it more. Oh, hey, so, so I had a great time today. I hope. Oh, shit. I said mm-hmm. I hope. <laughs> My bad. Just just say start. Don't let's let's drop the acting for a second. Just just say it like you're uh-huh. talking to Anthony and just say I'm the type Anthony. of person who. Okay. I'm the type of person who who like who needs to take like I realize this about myself that I, I need to take like two or three days to figure out if I connect with someone. Mm, that's great. I loved that. That felt real. Yeah. That felt positive. I'm the type of person who who likes, I would even, I mean, if we're getting down to words here, I would, I would take away the word needs and I would say likes. I'm the type of person yeah. that likes to take, you know, two or three dates to really get to know somebody, you know, to see if I'm attracted, to see if there's any chemistry. Um, and I just wanted to let you know that because I just see this first date as the beginning and I can't wait to see you again and maybe even, you know, for a third time to see if, you know, if there's any spark. Mm-hmm. How did that sound uh, to you? Yeah, that was great. That was 10 times better than what I did. No, <laughs> no, it was not 10 times better. It was only like three <laughs> times better, bro. Come on. Um, no, you know what no, you could yeah. do is after this after this stream is over, you could watch this over. Watch your examples. Watch my examples. Maybe practice, right? Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Cool. For sure. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right, buddy. Cool. Thank you so much Thanks, for asking man. the question. I hope to see you soon. Yes. Later. Thanks. We're gonna bring in. Oh my good friend, cat. Oh, kitty cat. Kitty, the kitty cat, my dude, my buddy, what's going on? Hey, how's it going? I gotta mute the stream. Okay. Yeah, she knows. She knows. Damn, I missed you. You're a sight for sore eyes, dude. I know. Where have you been? I've been working on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but now I should be good. Whoa. What did you quit? (laughs) No, I didn't quit. For the for the show. (laughs) Just for the show, yeah. No, just kidding. Hell yeah. But um. What was I going to say? Okay, so I'm so mad that I missed the stream that you did last week about telling the dating stories mm. because I've been trying to tell you dating story for the past two oh, months. Oh, shit. Okay. And I wasn't here and I missed it, but Damn. I'll tell you next time. Yeah, tell me next time. And I think maybe Thursday I'll have a dating story themed episode so you could be there too. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. Um, All right, so what do you got for me? But the question that I have is just a very simple, generic question that I feel like comes up all the time in every type of situation where it's like, oh, your significant other can't make you happy. Mm. Your this and that can't make you happy. And this whole concept is just like very confusing to me because I'm like, don't your friends, to a certain extent, make you happy? Don't you generally, like, have a good time when you're with your friends? Mm-hmm. So I know, I understand that you shouldn't, 
like expect another person to make you happy Mm -hmm. you shouldn't expect a certain change within yourself like to be a happier person around someone else and especially you shouldn't desire a relationship Mm -hmm. yeah thinking that it will like yeah change you make you a better person do all these different things yeah but i feel like people take it too far and Mm -hmm. put that type of uh mindset in their head where it's like i mean generally speaking i am like i i am like you know like i said happy with my friends Mm -hmm. generally like being with my friends like makes me happy Mm -hmm. and of course i'm not happy with my friends all the time i don't expect to be happy in any situation all the time you know like Mm -hmm. that's just life yeah but i kind of wanted to hear your perspective on this and i'm sure you've brought it up here and there but just to like Mm -hmm. clarify your um ideas about it okay cool because of course it is like something that does that people say all the time and it's like Mm -hmm. "Mm, i feel like not everybody has the same um understanding of it you know okay so cat to to help me answer this better can you now ask me the question in like one sentence yeah so what what are your ideas about another person not making you happy or another um the why Mm. should why should you not not have the mindset that a significant other is going to make you happy so okay so what i think you're saying is why is it that anthony says don't rely on your partner to make you happy yeah is that the question okay yeah okay so in in a sense you are that your partner is making you happy Mm -hmm. Um, but your friends are making you happy. Mm -hmm. You, Kat, you're making me happy. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the room I'm in right now is making me happy. Mm -hmm. Uh, my little puppy down there who's sleeping, he's making me happy. Mm -hmm. I'm making me happy. Mm -hmm. Um, my sense of purpose is making me happy. I'm always happy. Now, okay, I know you said, well, we can't do that all the time. What, I don't mean that I get don't get in bad moods sometimes or that I feel kind of negative sometimes, and that's okay. But underneath, if we kind of like wiped that away, you would still see somebody that loves life and loves being here and appreciates every moment even when I'm feeling negative. Um, And I just wanted to clarify that because, yeah, I'm not like jumping for joy at every moment, everywhere I go at every second of the day. Just wanted to clear that up. But deep Uh underneath, I do feel a strong love and appreciation and gratitude for being here and an overwhelming um, just kind of blown away like a feeling of being blown away at just the fact that i get to live and experience life um so if i get into a relationship with somebody that person is making me happy so the, the the answer is here is yes and no yes that person is making me happy but do you rely on that one person out of all of the things in the world that you've been given the gift of life do you do you isolate your happiness to one person's feelings about you now another thing is am i happy because they love me or am i happy because i love them mm-hmm Right? Yeah. So, again, are you relying on their love of you in order to be happy? 
Now, hopefully, you and everybody listening right now, after I've walked us through all of that, is going, yeah, it does, it does sound kind of stupid to rely yeah. our <laughs> happiness on this one person and how they feel about you. Wow. And I guess, that, yeah. I guess that, sorry to interrupt. Oh, yeah, keep going. But I was just going to say, like, I guess the reason why it doesn't make sense to me is because I haven't ever experienced that and mm. I don't understand why anyone else would do that. Like, Do what? Um, try to put all their happiness like on another person got or it, try to it, expect all their happiness on another yeah. person because it just doesn't make sense to me yeah and so for instance earlier today i was like listening to a podcast that that was like the topic of the episode and i'm just listening to it like this doesn't make sense to me i don't <laughs> understand you're so funny and um, then at the yeah. end of the episode she's like yeah so and it's like someone that's married and she's like, yeah, so, you know, your other, you, the other person can't make you happy. But then when I started to feel better, then I went and talked to my husband and he made me feel so much better. And it's like, well, you just said that he made you feel so much better. Yeah. So it's not like yeah. you're not doing anything to contribute to your happiness. Yeah. Like, what are you talking about? I kind of feel like there's a lot of influencers on the internet that, really are not qualified to talk about certain topics and they do <laughs> just because they have a base that's ready to listen to them. Yeah. I know. And so like, if you just want to, if you go, just want to, yeah. I off on my friends about this. I'm like, <laughs> you don't need to listen to everything that everybody says all the time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but you know, I, I'm not very much into this, but, um, y you know, well, actually, let me let me think of a better way to say this. Some people, I believe, were taught at a young age uh, how to how to have a relationship with people, okay. and sometimes those teachings could be harmful and create strong neediness in relationships, yeah. which makes them rely on the other person to be happy. Um, yeah. And it's unfortunate because a lot of those things that were taught to them when they were young, those are kind of baked into their psyche, you know, like it, yeah. those, those are the harder situations because that, that, that's been part of their reality all their lives. And to yeah. just have and somebody subconscious. Yeah. And then to just have somebody go, well, you shouldn't rely on them to be happy. And they go like, well, uh, that's not what I've been told my entire life. So, uh, what the fuck you taught saying now? And yeah. Yeah. Um, and so everybody's different and everybody has li yeah. different levels of neediness. Yeah. And everybody's been taught different ways and, mm -hmm. And, and all of that stuff. But but generally, mm -hmm. everybody has been taught this. It's in it's in mm -hmm. our culture, you know? The music mm -hmm. is, I can't live without you, you mm -hmm. know? I, I live for you. I can't live mm -hmm. if you don't, if you're not with me. You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's mm -hmm. movies, that's TV, that's music. It's all over the place. And it's, yeah. okay, so it's taught to us we why why shouldn't we believe it uh-huh um that makes sense. so yeah um uh, but you you say you get it like you know you you don't have those feelings and, and so that's great mm -hmm. yeah and i'm I, I appreciate what you said because what you were saying at the beginning about like everything in life to a certain extent should it contribute to your happiness and your general well-being and that that is genuinely how i feel like 99 of the time great so it, it i need that reminder good i'm glad that like everything around me is contributing to my happiness and mm. well-being and there isn't anything in life that's going to take any of those things away from me. Mm. Like even when I go through really tough times yeah. and mm -hmm. when something bad happens, like there's still 
in infinitely more things in life that contribute to my enjoyment of yes. life in general. Yes, beautifully said. Um, and what I'm so why did you why did you ask me this question? Is it just because well, you were watching that podcast, listening to that podcast? Yeah, I was listening to this podcast earlier, so it's like, and it was only like a couple hours ago, so it's like fresh mm. on my oh, mind. Oh, yeah. And I was actually listening to the podcast when I got the notification about like, ask me about anything <laughs> on the podcast and that. And I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to ask you this. Yeah, <laughs> baby. Awesome. Oh, I'm so glad you asked it too, because I'm sure there's people yeah. out there that, you know, they want to know the yeah. answer to that question. And it's also a little bit, um, I mean, you know, it is something that's brought up on the internet all the time. Yeah. So I'm like, let me just, let me just clarify what you want to say about it yeah. and just, bring it up as my yeah. question of the day. Yeah, and before I let you go, there has been a little bit of a a come a come up -a, a comes up -y, a come up of people <laughs> saying, well, what do you mean I have to be happy first? Uh why can't I like and then they use the examples like should I should I uh should I not drink water when I'm thirsty? Should I not eat when I'm hungry? Yeah. Okay. And then I see, you know, there's people are liking the hell out of that millions of views. I mean, the answer is pretty simple. That's a really stupid metaphor because if you don't drink water, you die. You literally yeah. die. Yeah. You get sick and you die. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody doesn't love you or you or or if you don't love yourself yet before you're in a relationship, you don't die. <laughs> you don't yeah. die. And sometimes like and sometimes I go through phases in life where I feel like I don't love myself. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that I'm an unhappy person. Mm -hmm. It is more so that like I'm just going through a tough time you know of course. and i feel like everyone goes through tough times 100 percent. and and it's not it's not something to be like oh, okay now i'm a bad person now <laughs> i feel yeah now i'm just like <laughs> i gotta start all over at the beginning of learning how to love myself and learning how to be a good person and all <laughs> these things but <laughs> it is something that eventually you'll get through yeah and eventually you'll be reminded of the happiness that you always had around you and within yourself and all the all the things that you enjoy in life so it, even if you do feel like that and like this goes out to like anyone watching like it, it's not the end of the world and it doesn't mean that like you're this terrible person that hates yourself like it's just everyone goes through those periods and it's fine cat i like miss talking to you you're so fucking cool <laughs> dude thanks please thanks. keep please come back soon because i don't want you to go away for so long you're so chilled <laughs> what the fuck um yeah and and just to cap it off self-love yeah. has less about loving yourself it's more about loving life and then you will love yourself when you love your life focus on loving yeah. life focus on loving yeah. what's happening right now in your life yeah then you will that opens the door to loving yourself make sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yay okay you have a good night thanks bye you see you soon let's pull in hip oh, i don't want to do it's gonna all right i'm gonna say it because it's really cringy let's let's pull in hip hip lore <laughs> fuck that was too bad i'm glad you didn't hear that so um I made a really cringy joke. Sorry. That's okay. Good. You didn't hear it, did you? I did hear Fuck! it. Fuck! Damn it. Now I'm going to be thinking about it all night. Damn it. Shouldn't have done it. That's okay. Has anyone else ever said that before? All the time? No. <laughs> okay. Not really, but... Uh, all right. Well, okay. how are you? I haven't seen you in a while, too. I'm good, thank you. And yourself? Very good. You are looking very nice today. 
or tonight. Thank yeah. you. I got my hair done a few days ago, so maybe that's what it is. Yeah, it's looking dope. Uh, yeah, got a little bit more blonde in my hair now. So mm, yeah, I noticed that. You kind of have a little uh, David Gold Wookie outfit on, don't you? I know. Like I noticed that when I got on the Zoom, I was like, "Oh, we're twinning right now." <laughs> Can you stand up for a second? Okay, this is this is not right. There's something. You know what? There's like this is too coincidental. You and David have to connect on your <laughs> on your you know Wookie outfits, or is this just what the kids are wearing these days? No, I was just like chilling at home and I was freezing because the heater wasn't working in my house. Oh. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to grab the first sweater that I see. Nice. Nice. Um, okay. So what's your question for me? My question is, how do you know if someone is actually, okay, I'll give you some context before I actually answer um, the question. Uh, I mean, ask you the question. So I have this friend who said, let's go out for coffee and then he decided where we're going and what we're doing and we've both expressed attraction to each other mm. but i'm like i don't know if it was actually a date or not mm. so how did he express attraction yeah. to you I, we got to do forensics here well he said that i looked really good and that because we used to we were in a study group together. So he let's, was like, let's, I'm hey, sorry. we just asked you. Sorry, let me, let, me, go. let me rewind and let's back up even more because it'll yeah. help me to get the full visual on exactly what happened. So give me the place, the time. How did, what, what was the situation here? Paint me a picture. Okay, so the situation was um, over the last year, we've been uh, setting up group chats for classes um, and then meeting up with a few other people. And then on the last day, he was like, we should go for coffee. Mm. And then he texted me later. He was like, we're going out for coffee this day, this time. Whoa. So Spicy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A little bit of flirting back and forth, but. <laughs> Have you guys ever met up in person before? It was in person, like our study groups oh, were in person. Oh, got it, got it. Okay. And but usually it was with at least one other person. Yeah. So did did it seem like he just wanted to do it with you or with a group? I think just me because he went like, I don't know. He just asked me and not the other person people that were in our group. Oh, damn! And were they <laughs> were they in earshot of this uh, proposal? Like we were walking in the same direction and then he said, we should go out uh, for coffee. Okay. And um, how, how long have you, have you known him? Uh, since September. And you guys have been like talking and being really friendly with each other and all that type of stuff. Yeah. Got it. And just, just to say it again, you've never hung out with him one-on-one -on -one before. No, it was always in a study group. Great. Okay. And is this towards the end of school right now? And is that like... No, we like, just finished school mm -hmm. and he asked me for coffee a few weeks ago. Got it. And then we actually went out for coffee. Ah. Ah. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Before we get there, hold on. I'm really excited to hear about this, but I really like to get everything. Before yeah. you guys hung out, did you express your attraction to each other? Yeah, we were venturing back and forth a bit so what'd you guys say oh i don't he said like something about like he did better on the first midterm and i did better on the second midterm and he was like oh we're gonna see who ends up on top oh well okay damn well i i'm not sure i can't say for sure that's a double entendre or if he is just uh you know, accidentally falling into these double entendres. <laughs> no, and then he winked at me afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, <laughs> "I've never winked at somebody after saying a double entendre, but I'm gonna now. Oh, I'm <laughs> gonna." <laughs> um, okay, so was that the only thing? Yeah, um, and so we went. 
we actually went for the coffee and he was like, we definitely need to do this again. Okay. And have you said you expressed your attraction to him? Is that correct? Yeah. And what did you say? I can't even remember, but I made him blush. So. Ooh. Okay. Was it something about his looks? Yeah, it was something about his looks. Okay, cool. And have you, okay. So how long ago was this coffee date? Well, uh, I don't even remember. Uh, it was the 23rd. Okay. Coffee date was the 23rd and it's the 31st right now. So like a week ago. Yeah. And have you guys been texting since regularly? Yeah, pretty regularly. And I'm having a graduation party because I just finished my BA. So. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, then he's coming to my house and yeah. Wait, 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 wait. When is he coming to your house? On the 10th. For your graduation party or for my graduation party? Yeah. Got it. Got it. Got it. Has he proposed a new date? Like the, just the 10th and then not yet again. So the 10th as in your graduation. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Alrighty. And have you, I'm, I'm sorry. Did you say that you're texting since the coffee date was flirty? A little playful, yeah. funny, like jokey. Okay. Really engaging. Yeah. Um, now this guy is, he's, he's your age. He's in your grade. Like, normal guy um yeah is he the type of person that is super duper outgoing and likes to just hang out with random people i don't know i don't really know him that well <laughs> oh come on you've known him since september september like he would just usually just sit beside me in class got it okay got it like out on his own he would just go and sit and so we'd have he, whenever the professor would like try and say a joke he's the person i would tell the jokes to mm -hmm. okay cool very good uh by the way people in the live chat if you can't see they are they are giving you big ups <laughs> big love for graduating saying how amazing Thank you, you are okay all right now that i think i've i have looked everything over under over from every which way can you ask me your question now in one sentence? Yeah. Do you think that was actually a date or not? Okay. So, um, do you want it to be a date? Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Um, why are you wondering if it was a date or not? I don't know. I'm like, I have no experience dating, so mm. it's like very difficult for me to know if it is or not. Okay. So this is what I would say. And this is how I would go about it personally as well. I mean, obviously everything I okay. teach is I do personally as well, but um, I don't care if it's a date or not. Yeah, I don't yeah. either. It's just like, I just want to understand a little bit better <laughs> for those kind of situations. Um, so what I'm saying is when I try to figure that stuff out, it usually ends up me, I don't know, not really being myself, kind of, it, it starts making me needy it starts getting me focusing too much on the person. Do they like me? I wonder if they like me. Oh, I hope they like me. What if they don't like me? What if I say something that stops them from liking me? So what I have trained myself to do, and this is how I teach people, just focus on how much you like him. Just focus on how much fun you have with him. Even okay. focus on your attraction towards him. Don't worry or think or ponder how they feel back about you. Okay. Um, 
get into a merely appreciative headspace with this person. Appreciative, fun, enjoyable, and keep doing what you're doing. Okay. Because so far, if you hung out with a guy and he goes, we need to do this again. It's, uh, it seems pretty good to me. Okay. okay. And, and I'm just appreciative of the fact that somebody says that to me. I'm just appreciative that I get to go on this coffee date with somebody that I like and that they want to see me yeah. again and that they want to come to my graduation party. And that fills me with such joy. And the second I go, wait, what is this? How do they feel about me? What is this situation? How should I be acting in this situation? If it's a date, should I be acting differently? All of these questions that come up, they're going to stunt me. They'll, I meant not stunt, sorry. The word is stifle me. Yeah. They're gonna stifle me. It's gonna make me needy. It's gonna get me obsessing. It's gonna get me uh, not focused on how much I like that person and rather get me strategizing on how I can get that person to like me. Um, so my answer, sense. yeah. So my answer is keep doing what you're doing. Enjoy this beautiful friendship that you have with this person. Be excited for where it goes and allow it to keep going. Keep expressing your interest and attraction in him in the cute little ways that you guys are doing so. You know, you don't have to make this big, oh, I really like you. I really find you attractive. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> yeah. You could you could just say little things like, wow, you look really cute when you laugh or whatever. A little, little tiny things here and there just to let the person know, hey, I, I like you. Like, I'm attracted to you. It doesn't have to be big, okay. small, tiny things. And they don't have to be a lot. You could do it maybe once in a while. And that's it. Just enjoy. Thank the, you so much. Yeah. Lore, Lore, just enjoy the ride you're on. Okay. Just, you know, and, and that's it. Just say, man, I really enjoy and appreciate this. How do you feel about that? I feel good about that. Like, that's what I've been doing, but I've just been like in the back of my head. It's just been a question. Yeah. That, I'm like, yeah. you know what? Mm -hmm. It'll have. Yes. Like, it's fun. Mm-hmm. Like, we laugh so much. Mm. I and love so, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so whether it's a date or whether it's not a date, you two like each other a lot. It's obvious. And just ride it. Ride this wave, baby. And and okay. another thing, another thing, if, as this as this relationship progresses, I want to hear about it. You already got me hooked into the story of Lori. <laughs> the story of <laughs> Lori. <laughs> um, I'm hooked. I want to know more. We got to talk. We got to get an update after graduation party. Okay. Have a lot of fun. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Of have course. a nice night. You have a great. You have a great night too, and I hope to see you soon. Good. Bye. Goodbye, my dear. Cool. All right. So we have Lucia or Lucia and Bijan both in the Zoom. But we've run out of time. But don't worry. I had so much fun answering your questions today. Felt really good to do. And I'm going to do another one of these episodes. If not Thursday, then probably next week. Uh, it's so great that I actually have people in the world that just want to ask me questions about their lives. Look, what? This isn't real. Is this really happening? So I just, I want to thank you guys so, so, so much for jumping on the Zoom, having the courage to get vulnerable enough to ask about your, your dating life, your relationships in your life, your confidence, all of that stuff. I'm, I am humbled because I'm not sure if I would do that. Maybe I would. I don't know. It sounds a little scary to me. But you guys had the courage to do that. And it makes me feel really good to know that 
you want to do that with me. Um, so please keep coming. Please keep coming. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, please keep coming. And uh, that's it. Well, I'll see everybody next next day plus one. <laughs> all right. I'm just um, all right. I have to go.